Hello, my name is Talon Peterson. Um, I'm here today to talk with you about model evaluation. Essentially, in this world of, of ecological niche modeling and species distribution modeling, we produce a lot of spatial predictions and we need to have some idea of whether those predictions are useful and robust. And so this module of the, the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum is designed to uh, give you some basic uh, concepts uh, working towards a methodology for, uh, for testing and evaluating model predictions. And essentially what we're doing is we're asking two questions. One is whether the models that we're producing um, give us predictions that are better than random. Essentially, is there a signal that's distinguishable from the noise? And the other is whether the models are giving, a, giving us a prediction that is good enough for the purposes uh, that we're conducting the study for. So let's start out by uh, by talking about some, some introductory concepts. And specifically, we'll start talking about presence data versus absence data. So presence data is one that records the occurrence of a species at a particular place at a particular time. And one thing about the presence data is that under most circumstances, these data will be correct and informative. The relatively unusual circumstances where they are not will be things like misidentifications and uh, georeferencing errors. But most of the time, a presence datum is correct. Now, in absence, we have a very different situation. Absence data are, can be very heterogeneous in terms of why the species is not there. It could be, for example, that a group of researchers uh, visited the place, the species was present, but the species wasn't encountered. Some species are hard to detect. So that's an, an absence datum that's positively misleading. Other reasons for absence might be that the, uh, the place was visited, but the species wasn't there because it had never gotten there. Um, why are there no elephants living in South America? Probably not because they couldn't survive there, probably rather because they've never been there. So, uh, the absence data are very complex because we don't know which absence data points are absent because the species is not encountering appropriate environments. Um, so, I don't want to go into a lot of detail with this because we'll treat this in other modules of this curriculum, but the, the basic outcome is that we place a lot more confidence in presence data than in absence data. And so for that reason, uh, we, we want to build this difference in weighting into our methodologies. Okay, a second major uh, introductory concept that we want to discuss is the idea of calibration data versus evaluation data. Uh, Calibration data are essentially those data that we feed into our modeling algorithm and that uh, the model is based on. So clearly the model is not independent of the calibration data. Quite clearly, these are not the data that we want to use to test whether our model has some predictive ability. Evaluation data are independent. But that independence is a very strange thing. They're still detecting presences of the species in question. So in that sense, they're not independent. But ideally, we would have some source of occurrence data that doesn't come from the same source as our calibration data. Uh, we'll, we can talk about this in other modules as well. Uh, but what I'm after is that we would like to have some degree of, of uh, independent confirmation of model predictions so that our model evaluations are not, uh, not circular. Now a third important uh, concept is that of overfitting. And I'll give you a very simple example for overfitting. Let's imagine that we had a data set that looks like this. 
and we want to develop a model. So this might be a prediction, and this might be truth. This is just a very simple idea. And we might produce a model that does this. And you can see that the prediction explains every bit of the truth, right? Each one of these occurrence points is predicted exactly by our model. But we may have a problem here because if we gave it more data, these are our independent evaluation data, maybe our evaluation data would look like this. And so you can see that our model didn't do a really good job of predicting these independent data points. And maybe what we need is a simpler model that looks like that. And that may actually be a better solution, a simpler solution that gives us a more general answer to our prediction uh, challenge. So this is just a very simple uh, example, but essentially what I'm after is that overfitting can sometimes give you a very precise answer to the calibration data, but a very imprecise or very error-laden uh, view of independent data. So we want to get essentially the simplest model that has the most general predictive ability. Uh, and that's, that's essentially the concept of overfitting. And then the final uh, introductory concept that I'd like to mention is the difference between performance and significance. Significance is simply the idea of whether there is a signal that's distinguishable from random, essentially whether your model is performing better than random expectations. Performance is actually how well the model explains an independent data set. I'll give you another example. Imagine that we're flipping coins. If we were flipping coins, we're expecting a 50% probability of success. Well, maybe I can predict heads versus tails in a coin flip with a 51% accuracy. Now, if I do a lot of coin flips, that's going to be statistically significant. But do I want to base strong inferences on a 1% improvement in predictive accuracy? Probably not. So those are some introductory concepts. Uh, and in the next uh, section of this, of this uh, module, we'll talk about the practicalities of evaluating models.